the new way, and <laughs> sure. for starters, and, and is it possible to really detach people from political parties? Great. Well, it's great to be here. It's, it's a town I love. Uh, I have family here, and I've always loved coming here. Um, so the premise behind the book, um, it's really a plea, right, for to, to have a new brand of leadership in this unbelievably disruptive moment that we're in, in American history. Uh, and I think it only comes around every three or four times this sort of moment where our culture is changing, our politics is changing, our economy is changing, and media, as you all know full well, is changing. And in the midst of that, we need a different brand of leadership that doesn't force people into these false choices on a lot of different things, including politics. And the way the country has moved is we become tribalized, and people sit in their sort of confirmed biased bunkers, consume information that confirms those biases, and then they can't talk to each other at that point. And then when that happens, we start to have a democracy that breaks down. When you no longer can come out of your tribe and go into something into the common good, then you can't have a functional democracy. So my thing in this is starting at the local level, encouraging, or, or as I say, pleading to leaders, local leaders to rise and sort of get people out of the false choice. And one of those huge false choices is the idea that you have to put on a jersey that's red or blue, and once you do, you can't talk to the other side, or you have to fight, you have to fight. And at this point in time, we need to hearken back to our founders, who basically didn't like partisanship. Uh, George Washington, actually, in his final, in his farewell address, talked about the dangers of it. And so it is a, it is a, one part of the plea is let's put country over party and do, do things in the common good. Do you see evidence of some place where that's happening, or are we pretty much starting from zero? Well, I don't think it's happening at all in Washington, at zero. I see zero evidence of it in Washington, D.C. I see evidence of it in basically in the communities around the country. If you go to places, and I'm sure it, there, there it's true here in Kansas City or in other towns, it's true in Austin and other places around the country where there are the local leaders are getting together trying to fix local problems without really any help from Washington, D.C. in this. And so... It, it's happening, the seeds of it are all locally, and my view of leadership out of Washington is the leaders out of Washington don't lead, they follow. And you can't impose something, the idea of brand of leadership that I would desire is not going to be imposed by some new president or new sort of, you know, new leader out of Washington. It's going to be done locally, and then the leaders in Washington are figure out that that's what the country wants, and they're going to follow it. Matt, Matt you, yeah, I think it's very clear that there is sort of a great yearning in the middle of our country for just what you described, some sort of third way or an alternative way to address politics. But you also get the sense that the people in the middle who might form the basis for a, for a, some sort of organization around that are those least interested in politics, right? That the people on the left and the right who get so energized are those uh, people who do pay attention, blog, you know, write letters to the editor. How, how do you get the middle to understand what's at stake enough that you can overcome the noise that you get from the left end? Well, I think, I think that's a very valid assessment uh, of, of the situation. Normally, we have the polls that are very passionate, and usually it's all heat, right? It's all this divine, divine heat that comes at you, and it's usually negative about the other side. There's some in fact, positive. in some ways, it's defined by the other side. Yes. You're defined by your hatred it's, of the other side. Even before you get to issues, yeah, we you just automatic, don't like him culturally or socially. Or yeah, it, issues actually are, the, are secondary right. to what their their cultural issues are. I do think what's happened, and I actually think we're going to look back at Donald Trump as an accelerator towards this. Interestingly enough, because I think it, what it's going to cause and has caused already already people to now understand what is at stake that what matters, that they need to get in more involved, that right. the vast m middle of this country, which w what I'm talking about represents the vast majority of the country, not the polar sides of each of it, but the vast majority, who I think now are tuning in, and that I have to say uh, precipitated by Donald Trump, in right. whether it's for good or for they don't like what he's doing. And so I think that movement, and I think you've seen it in rallies, I think you've seen it people in organizing, they're trying to figure out and get their sea legs and muscles and how to do it. And I think you'll see more and more and more of that emerge, and I think you'll see a bunch of that emerge in 2018. Yeah, we called it the Trump effect. We had a local bond issue election in April in which the turnout was double what it was for the mayor's election. And one of the things I do think is happening is this sort of idea that Trump has convinced people you have to pay attention, you have to 
take part. Do you see that in other parts of the I, country? I, that's all over. So you take yeah. a look at the special election, the special election that happened in Kansas. There was a big turnout right. that happened here. The special election that happened in Georgia. There was a big, tur huge turnout there, largest turnout ever in a special election in Georgia. And you just get it. You go through the airport. People are paying attention. And as I say, it's both people that are encouraged that want Trump, that that's good, they're encouraged to be in the system, and then people that are resisting it or wonder if that's where, where we really need to go as a country. I think all of that is good, but I think what you will see it unfold and not some new third party candidate or new presidential candidate at the national level, you'll see it emerge in the local elections around the country in 2018.